Good morning to everyone here with us in the auditorium today and to those of you who are out watching us on uh, your television. I call our meeting to order and we'll have roll call and we're still doing hand, um, okay, I think we're all here today. And our invocation will be given by uh, Commissioner Williams and uh, Mr. Owens will do our pledge. If you'll please stand. Now we have, gracious Father, we thank you for these who are here today, gathered at home and in this audience. We pray your mercy on all the residents. Pray that we will get love and understanding and friendship. Embrace our hearts that we may do your will. And all these things I ask in your name. Amen. 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 Let's face the flag, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Chair. Yes, sir. Uh, along with, with the pledging of the, the, to the flag, I think it's appropriate that this board uh, gives a moment of silence for our officers, our first responders, and people all over the world that give of their time and their effort to protect us and to see that we have a good and valid life. And I hope the chair will honor that. Oh, yes, please. Um, if you would see fit, we'll have a minute of uh, silence in any way you would like to ask for that to happen as our citizens. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. Owens. Okay, our presentation is the first. Oh, approval of agenda. I'm sorry. So moved. Second. Second. Okay, all in favor of the approval of the agenda, please raise your hand. Okay, unanimous. And now we'll have our first presentation uh, the Girl Scout Gold Award, Alyssa Coleman. And um, we need to have motion a motion. To, motion to approve. Second. 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 Okay, all in favor, please raise your hand. Okay. If you'll come on up forward and anyone who's with you, please come and join us. Good morning. Okay. I'm going to ask our manager to read the presentation. Um, but first, I'd like just to read a statement about what the Gold Award is, and um, we do this regularly for the, the Boy Scouts and the Girl Scouts. We're starting to do this more regularly, but I just wanted to read this, what we're doing here this morning. For the um, Girl Scouts, the Gold Award is the highest achievement within the Girl Scouts of the USA, earned by senior, by senior and ambassador Girl Scouts. Only 5.4% of eligible Girl Scouts successfully earn the Gold Award, and the Gold Award recognizes the work of Girl Scouts who demonstrate leadership, that culminates in 80 hours of work or dedicated um, towards a service project that has an lasting effect on the community. So I'd like to recognize what, what we're doing here this morning. And Thank you for that. The board also has prepared a certificate. If you'd like me to read this, yes, I will, please. and you can present it. Certificate of Appreciation is awarded to Alyssa Coleman for achieving the Girl Scout Gold Award for her project. She partnered with the Time for Science to enhance a local wetland area and educated the public about wetland conservation. The certificate is presented by the Pitt County Board of Commissioners this 18th day of July 2016 and signed by our chairman, Beth B. Ward. Thank you. Um, we are so proud that we have been having the opportunity to do this with our females in our county who have been contributing for a long time. And along with the Boy Scouts, it's phenomenal how you all have contributed to the well-being of this whole county. And we commend you for that, and thank you. Congratulations to the parents for all the children. Uh -huh. Would you like to say something? You don't have to, but would you like to? Okay. Thank you all for coming. We appreciate you all coming. No pictures? Yeah. 
Next we have the um, Employee Service Awards, and if you want me to go ahead and... Yeah, we'll go in and start that. These and are... if you'll come forward. Um, employees, Adam, employee Service Awards for the workforce of Pitt County Government, and what we will do this morning is we'll recognize the employees of Pitt County Government who have earned um, recognition for 5, 10, 15, 20, and 25 years of service. And as we call your name, you'll come up and receive your award. And if we can, hold applause to the end of each um, category um, as we go along. So five-year awards, we have Sean Kenny with DSS. Michael McDaniel, Detention Center. Deputy Mario Mealy. Pitt County Sheriff's Office, also Pitt County Office Building Security. You come the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> Making sure I'm safe from behind, right? <laughs> James, James Vincent, Detention Center. Okay, that's our five year. Our 10 year recognitions first one is Colleen Anderson, DSS. Somebody must be on vacation. Yeah. <laughs> Maria Andrews, Public Health. William Arnold, Animal Services. Chris Arnold. She's a sweet girl. Ten years. Wow. Wow. Portia Barrett, Social Services. James Casper, Environmental Health. Congratulations. Matthew Davis, Sheriff's Office. Bertha Hall Bryant, Social Services. Sarah Harris, Social Services. Rodney Jacobs, Detention Center. Susan May, DSS, formerly Human Resources. Next one, Deborah Pollard with DSS can attend this morning. Our last tenure recognition is to Joanne Robertson, election. All right, round of applause, please. We have five recognitions for the 15 year category Angela Carroll, DSS. Francis Kennedy the third, Sheriff's Office. Stephen McKent, oh, I'm sorry, here he comes. Stephen McKinney, Detention Center. <coughs> <coughs> <coughs>
April Roebuck, Buildings and Grounds. Formerly registered deeds. John Williams, <laughs> Detention Center. <coughs> All right, round of applause, please. <laughs> In our 20 year category, we have two um, public safety employees with the Sheriff's Office. First one is John Gard, 20 years. And as we always recognize in the wrapped silver papered box is a memento for the employee as a watch to recognize their 20 years of service to the county. It's a Rolex, it is a Rolex. <laughs> and our second recognition is to Eric Todd. A genuine. Again, the momentous watch. Congratulations. Round of applause. And today, our last recognition, we have one employee in the 25-year category within the Public Health Department. If Alice M. George will come forward, if they're here, Ooh. good. Congratulations. And that concludes. <laughs> yes. And we have a reception, and we'd like for everyone to join us. And those of you, our staff and our award winners for the number of years, if we'll go through that door back there in the back and come out on this side. And thank you all so much for your service to Pitt County. We have light refreshments. Yes, in the back, for so everybody. Yes. So if you'll come on, we'll open the doors. Um, Welcome back, and um, we'd like to give honor again to um, all of our employees who are staying with us and sticking with us. We have some of the best employees in the state of North Carolina in this county, and I mean that from the top to the bottom. So I'm glad we got a chance to honor them in a small way. Um, our next item is our public addresses to the board. Uh, Mr. Manager, do we have anybody signed up? Yes, we have one person this morning signed up formally. We have Charles Creedle. He'll come forward. Madam Chair, I'll keep your time at three minutes. Okay, thank you very much. Ding. Okay. <laughs> no, no, not yet. Good On morning. your mark, get set, go. <laughs> Good morning. My name is Charles Cradle, and I'm here representing the people who live around State and Mill Road at the railroad crossing. And again, it's about railroad noise and train noise. Oh, how do you like fix this microphone? Yeah, bring it forward. How are we doing now? That's better. better. I'd like to thank the commissioners for passing that resolution at uh, the last meeting or meeting before that. And I'm just here to tell you today that there has been no change yet. So we're hopeful and excited that there will be but I want y'all to know how things are on the ground level. And at this time, there has been no change. They constantly, every day, park the trains between our houses and it sits there from two to eight or 10 hours sometimes. Uh, one thing I didn't get to say before because of the time restraints was, this is a chemical train. I would guess 80% of what it hauls is chemicals and hazardous material. It leaves Rocky Mount, it goes to Aurora, it stops in Greenville, well, a little bit of Greenville stuff, but it's, a, it's hauling hazardous material from Aurora back and forth to Rocky Mount. Sitting beside our house, this is another concern we have that it really bothers us. But I just want to thank the commissioners for all they do, and I want to take this opportunity to come up and tell you how appreciative we are of any effort you make. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Cradle, for that. We appreciate that, and I do know that there are lots of things in work, you know, but we haven't achieved anything yet, but a lot of people are working on it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, uh, next we have our uh, items for report, and um, Ms. Booker, if you'll come forward. Madam Chair, this being a repeat of what we've done about 12 times this year, 
uh, to substantiate and comply with the statute. I move we approve that. So I second it. Okay. All in favor, please raise your hand. And I'm going to give Ms. Booker an opportunity to say good morning. Speak because we have some good news and some item, one or two things she wanted to bring forward. Well, as far as the annual settlement goes, um, all that is is a summary of everything that we have done all year long. I know we have some newer commissioners, and that's probably the first time they've seen the annual settlement. Um, it, it's all of the collection operations and the items that we've done all year long summarized on the annual settlement. What we do have is one different page on the very back of the annual settlement, and item number 14 is an insolvent list for personal property taxes, and these are only for, um, we wish to have those declared insolvent by the board. They are over um, 10 years old, and we have exhausted all of our abilities on those personal property items. Okay. We also have under no number 15, relief from collection of property taxes on registered motor vehicles. Um, and we have exhausted all of our abilities as far as just the um, over 10 years old is all we're asking for relief on or for relief from collection on those. Um, we, you know, the, you can actually do this on much earlier items, but we've had success um, on the, the prior years. And we are just asking on both of these for uh, those over 10 years. Okay. And you are up next for our June 2016 tax collection report. Yes, and the screen is in front of you. Um, we ended out with an all-time high of 99% on that tax collection report. Um, I have here with me the deputy assessor and the deputy collector, and they make a great team, them and their staff. They have worked hard and diligently to achieve this new goal for Pitt County. Uh, it is also a key factor in your bond rating is that they will look at your collection rate. So I just wanted to thank the staff um, um, on a great job and great teamwork and also um, a shout out to the taxpayers for helping us achieve this goal. Good day. Thank you very much. And if you will approve both one Second. item one and two, if you'll include that. They're included. Okay. Second. We've had a motion and a second. Can yes, we sir. please vote? Okay, thank you. Yes, um, the manager wants to make a comment. Madam Chairman, I, was, I know this was in the paper. I know this is very well documented in the abstract, but I did want to just recognize Kathy and her staff. Um, a 99% tax collection rate is um, outstanding, I guess is the best word that comes to my mind. Um, when you look across all the other 99 counties across North Carolina, um, even those comparable counties, um, to get up to 99% is... Um, outstanding and kind of historical in, in essence. So just did want to recognize that and, and let them know what a great job they're doing. Yes, thank, thank you. you very much for that and all of your team, if you'll share that with we them. We certainly will. Back. Thank you very much. Thank you. And next we have our manager's report, Mr. Elliott. Yes, thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, first item, just to announce next, next meeting dates, the month of August will become a regular meeting schedule with the first and third Monday, August 1st and August 15th at 9 a.m. and 6 p.m. respectfully. Um, item B, you may have saw an article in today's paper. Um, we were directed to bring back to you at this meeting, um, July the 18th, the written policy for, uh, proposed policy of how the funding for the um, apparatus equipment for the volunteer fire departments would be proposed to be handled. We have um, developed that. Um, Alan Everett in emergency management had developed that policy working with, with myself. We. Um, met with the president of the fire association, John Heltzel, and um, presented that to him. He asked for the opportunity to present it to the fire association, which I believe is going this Thursday, the 21st, and then we thought we would bring it back on the formal agenda for August the 1st. But that has, it is ready to go, but we really wanted them to kind of have an opportunity to check off on it and have a, a say before it came back to the full board. Um, on the next one, the NACO voting delegate, on that one we had to, um, submit a name to um, NACO prior to this meeting. And I believe what, because we had um, commissioners Webb, McLawhorn, and Farley attending, um, I think what we did, we, we put down a name. We put down um, Vice Chairman McLawhorn, thinking 
Commissioner Webb would probably be tied up with the state association responsibilities being president. Um, so that name was submitted. Normally we bring that to you and you make that decision, but we kind of, we were under a time, time crunch and had to get that in prior to this meeting. If that's, hopefully it'll be okay with the board. Um, I don't think there are any objections. On item D, the NCC annual conference coming up, that'll be in Forsyth County. And I believe on that one, we need a voting delegate, correct, um, Kimberly? Yes. Motion to uh, nominate Commission Perkins Williams for that. Okay, nomination for Perkins Williams. Anyone else? Is there a second? Do we have to have a second to a nomination? We don't need a second. Okay, all in favor, please raise your hand. Okay, anyone opposed? Okay, thank you for serving. All right. Okay. Um, Does it come with instructions? Oh, yes. We will. We'll guide you. And everything. No, you're just responsible for all costs. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> they'll, yes, they'll give you any direction from me. Thank you for doing it. Item E on the list of items, security improvements, updates. We'll make the board aware where we stand in terms of um, building security improvements. The Development Services Building, which is on this campus here at 1717 West 5th Street, the security improvements to that building are complete in terms of the, the changes to the modification of the front entryway and how um, employees and the public access the building. Um, that went into effect several weeks ago. Courthouse improvements are complete. Um, as you probably, uh, again, read the newspaper, things seem to be running smoothly down there. We've been monitoring the, the flow of traffic into the Evans Street side of the courthouse. Um, the question has been brought up, and it was brought up, I think, even when we started the planning for the modifications about discussing some type of an awning structure outside the um, entrance on Evans Street if there's inclement weather. Um, Tim Corley has, has looked into some estimates on different options. Right now we've got everything from um, a low end of 35,000 to a high end of 95,000. Um, I think anything we put out there I'd recommend it, you'd want to be archi architecturally and aesthetically um, pleasing or in line with the architecture of the building. Um, so if there's interest in that, which I think there is, we'll bring that back for the board's consideration. There's no funding um, been appropriated or set aside for that at this moment, but we are thinking along those lines and we'll um, bring that back for the board's consideration. Okay. Uh, and before you yeah. go on, the, one of the, um, I wanted to let everyone know that Commissioner McLawhorn is going to be presiding at that particular group of districts at the state conference so the he'll be there meetings. to yes okay. for the district caucus meetings uh, I want to ask a question about the security does it mean that we will have to enter building differently than what we've been doing or how to will be stopped in some way or something all the employees and also the commissioners will give you a what we call a, a swipe card and you'll be able to move in and out of the buildings freely oh, okay. um, with with no problem um, the, in the county office building, this project is um, nearing completion. I think we're, we're looking at having these improvements, enhancements put into place by the end of this month. And um, again, it's limiting the, the free flow of traffic within the building, you know, unless you're somebody who works here or has business here, such as a commissioner as such. Had two other items. Um, one, Madam, Madam Chair. Yes, sir. Before you get too far. Speak to the uh, access to the rest of the deeds office, how that's been handled and, and what that is supposed to entail. Well, anybody coming to the rest of deeds office would, um, if you're a member of the public, would come through the Evans Street entrance and then would flow into the building um, up into the, the um, either up the stairs or there's a handicap elevator access for that area. Um, other than that, the, you used to be able to enter the Rester Deeds office from 3rd Street, walking up the, the historic courthouse steps. Um, that entryway and exit has been sealed off. Again, just trying to limit the number of points of access people can have ingress or egress into the facility. Both of them? But it's the same public entrance for... And once they get inside, they just go straight to the registered right. deeds what, office. Once you go through the security measures on the Evans Street side, then you have free flow into anywhere in the courthouse, whether registered deeds, clerk of court, courts, sheriff. My, my question is the handicap access. Okay. The old elevator been there since 1961. Uh, 
which did not work efficiently at one time. Does it work now? Does people know how to handle it? Is, is it I, we spoke about this when we were talking about it, and I was wondering if anything was done to regard, is it just like it was? Well, when the courthouse was um, renovated and added on to back in the late um, 1990s, there was a, a um, wheelchair lift type elevator that was installed. It's not a, it's not a, a regular elevator, but it's a wheelchair lift that takes you from, uh, lifts you up probably about 10 feet so you don't have to navigate those stairs. Have you used that? Uh, no, sir. I think but you need to. We'll, we'll be sure to check that out. I'll get with Mr. Corley and we'll um, make sure that's operational and that there's proper operating instructions out there with Thank it. Thank you. Thank you for bringing that forward because it certainly needs to be inspected and checked for it efficiency and good directions. <laughs> um, two other items. Back during the budget workshops and the budget deliberations, the, and also included on the CIP capital improvement plan, we had talked and discussed the need to um, install and replace cameras at the detention center, and this is currently on the CIP. Um, staff has developed an RFP, which is request for proposals. We would like to issue that RFP um, so that proposals can be sought for the camera system at the detention center. Um, the detention center staff has worked with county staff with the legal department to devise that. If the board is okay with that, we will release that. I will say that um, the funding um, was going to be identified as using fund balance, but I think since we've appropriated uh, um, fund balance in the budget um, process, we're probably looking at going out and borrowing money as part of a larger package on that. Um, but we can bring that back to you once proposals are received and discuss the, the funding for it. But didn't want to put that on the street without announcing that to the board and just having your... Um, can I ask awareness okay, do of that. we need them a motion or just no, you're going to move and John, you'll bring it back later? Yes, ma'am. I'd like to ask a okay. question about the detention center. Yes, ma'am. Do you all have, is, is there a problem out there with snakes crawling in? Because they do have it in some of the schools that's on, uh, that's not elevated. The snakes crawl into the Northwest Elementary School. I'm not aware of any, not to say there couldn't be, but no one has, has informed me of anything about snakes at the detention center. They have easy access to the schools, trust me, all, all four That's that I was I'm principal saying. in, but it's not a whole lot you can do about it. That's what I was wondering. Just have a good custodian who's not afraid of snakes. Well, so. see, it would be a problem at yeah. the detention center because you got to try to get them out, not unless they're going to call Glean. And one last <laughs> item that's not on the agenda when the board to be aware, I think a few of the commissioners may have been notified Friday. Friday at about 5.30, we had a um, lightning strike at the Winter Green Communications Tower um, that is the, the single tower that feeds our 700 megahertz radio system. This did not affect the paging system, but the, the 700 megahertz radio system did go down for about an hour. Um, no calls were, um, were missed to our knowledge, and you know, there was no loss of life or, or no you know, no, no harm to, to our knowledge. Again, the paging system was operational during the entire time. We did have wireless communications who came out on site immediately and identified that a lightning strike had taken place. There are um, modules or nodes on the tower, if that's probably not the right terminology, but there are these, these devices take the majority of the blunt of a lightning strike, but it doesn't take 100% of it. There was a piece that was, was um, um, harmed, per se, that had to be replaced. They replaced that on site. At the same time that that, that occurred, um, uh, Mr. Everett, Alan Everett, had notified the fire and EMS community that they were going on, a, on the, they would be notified via using their pagers until the system was fixed. Um, the system does have a backup system, and it, it, that being the Viper system. As you'll recall, the 700 megahertz and the Viper, are, the, 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 the Viper is the backup. Viper was, was there, but it was not fully um, operational per se, or fully utilized. There were some, um, there was a, an error in the 911 center where they didn't turn the volume control up to correctly here. We're gonna make sure we correct that. The only problem with um, the Viper is we can't test it because the state does not want us on the Viper system unless it's an emergency. So we would, if I had proposed to staff, well, why don't we test it quarterly? And they said, well, we can't because we're not allowed on there unless it's truly an emergency because we have our, our own um, system. I, I did want to point out that once the five tower site system is put into place, 
If we have a lightning strike on any one of the five towers, it does not take down the system. There's redundancy in the system. If one system, go, if one tower goes down, the other four towers will continue to function. You might have some diminished radio um, frequency coverage around that one tower until it's brought back up, but you won't be like today where you just have a, a single tower feeding back to the county office building. So that will be a, um, a, a better situation once the new system is in place. And, and speaking of that, the Motorola contract was signed and executed in full. It, as an update from last, last meeting, we're proceeding forward on that. And actually, we've already received the first payment invoice from Motorola on that, that, <laughs> that project. That's all I have. That it. OK. Uh, um, I'll entertain a motion for items for consent. So we'll do second. second. OK. All in favor, please raise your hand. Any opposition? OK. We'll Madam move. Chair. Yes. As to the consent agenda, item three, four, and five, there's uh, close to a million dollars being expended. Uh, what has been our procedure in the back to uh, inform the board about the progress of how that money is spent down the line? Okay, the um, juvenile crime prevention uh, money. Um, is you I mean, do, okay, do we normally me. have a follow-up as to how, how those funds are spent? I don't think historically that we've had reports, the committee come forward, but we could have a, a um, report by those groups, an annual report as to how those funds were utilized. Mm -hmm. I'd like for it to come back from you. Okay. okay. Uh, just as one member, that, that's my question. Thank you, ma'am. Well, I think each that's one of those, one. maybe we could have them report to you or come back to report to us, because most of those are grants and they come from the state. We just have to wait till they finally let us have the funding so we can move forward. But that's a good idea. Thank you. Um, okay, our items for discussion. Is that it for the other? Uh -huh. Okay, we'll do um, Mr. Elliott. Uh, Madam uh, Chairman. Mr. Elliott, if you'll. I, I have found some errors in your abstract. I trust that you will correct them. Yes, on the page 69, this item is the to um, amending the rules procedure, and I think we had ex expressed in the first sentence saying that the um, Commissioner Farley expressed a desire to amend the rules to eliminate the requirement of a motion to adjourn, and I think it should have said to uh, to amend or to to adjust. We apologize for that um, wording in that. Where does that go? Okay. I would I would like to call for a motion to add this clarifying uh, statement at the end of our rules of procedures. It does not eliminate the motion to adjourn. It merely clarifies what is permitted already under all known rules, such as Robert's rules. And uh, I would ask for a vote on that now. Okay. Would you state your motion? And we'll get a second, and I'm sure Glenn will give it to you. <laughs> he will. What is the motion exactly? The motion is to add this clarifying statement to the uh, end of our rules of procedure. Okay. Madam Chair. Yes. Mr. Carter spoke to me about that last Wednesday before I received the agenda package. I'm aware of what the staff has recommended about this uh, to be somewhat delayed until uh, the next chairman, the next vice chairman is brought into office. But, uh, and I talked extensively with Charles about that. I don't think it makes any difference with what he wants to add one way or the other. So if there's a member of this board that wants to, to insert some specific language, I have no quarrels with that. Okay, did we get a second to the I, motion? I'll second it to keep well, you the discussion have a second. Okay. okay. Madam Chairman, um, I think that decision making should be made at the lowest level. That is a general principle that I have. Uh, whenever we can get the input from citizens on an issue, I think that we need to do that. And I look at this board as having that same principle or should have that same principle. And to me, this board has two levels, the level of us eight commissioners and then the level of our chairperson. And I think the decisions should be made at the lowest level on this board and I support the uh, the rules that we currently have that says any one of us can make a motion to adjourn. 
and I would like to make a substitute motion that we affirm our rules of procedures the way they are currently written. I that does not that. eliminate that, okay. Jimmy. That we, doesn't eliminate that. I thought your whole idea was to move the adjournment up to the chairperson having the authority to do that. The chairperson has the option, and this is the lowest level of decisions. This is internal to our board. So then why do we need to change our rules then? Because it conflicts with our parliamentarian. Now, Mr. Owens. Does it conflict with our parliamentarian? Does it conflict will, with our parliamentarian? You will hear with Janice that we're not following the rules if the chairman of adjourns uh, on his own volition. So my understanding of your rules as it relates to adjourn is that you have a provision in your rules that states that um, any member of this board may make a motion to adjourn. Another portion of your rules says that every motion requires a second and is voted on and for this particular one would receive a majority vote and that's how your meeting would adjourn. Your rules also include a provision that say in an emergency situation the chair may adjourn the meeting. Um, Mr. My understanding of Mr. Farley's uh, addendum or additional language that's being added to the rules would grant additional authority to the chair to adjourn the meeting as chair in all instances, not just in an instance of an emergency. After but polling all members yep, for permission. I'm just going to finish that. Essentially consensus. We agreed on that. Yeah. Once, and the language requires a poll of all board members before the chair does that. And so it is a very, the suggested language um, is a very slight, in my opinion, expansion of your current rules of procedure, which would allow an additional option for the chair to adjourn the meeting without motion. Thank you, Madam Counselor. So why do we need that? What value That's does that nice. add to this board? That, um, whether it adds or does not add value is truly not a legal call. It's probably a matter of preference for how this board chooses to develop its internal operations. So Janice, make sure I understand. Are you telling me that the way our procedures are written now, they're inconsistent with Robert's rules of order? In a um, way, yes. I'm asking our attorney. Yes. Yes. They are. You're, well, Robert's rules of order is a large body of rules established for large um, organizations. Mm -hmm. This Board of Commissioners has adopted its own rules of procedure um, from Robert's rules of order in concept, but to modify it um, for a smaller board and to incorporate the preferences of the members of this board. And so, um, I wouldn't say it's in conflict with Robert's rules, but it does, Robert's rules of order recognizes the chairman's authority to adjourn a meeting without motion. Right. And this board um, recognizes that authority in limited circumstances. And that's perfectly legal. <clears throat> oh, absolutely, yes. Okay, and fine. may I just ask one question, or just make a statement? The, um, if anyone's ever seen the book of Robert's Rules of Order, it is a it is full, and all small groups, committees, yes. groups that follow Robert's Rules of Order mm -hmm. can use that in any way as long as it doesn't supersede what is written in there. Is that not correct? You can't change a procedure, but you can choose your regulations to go by what fit your small group as long as it doesn't go against what is in the volumes of information for Robert's Rules of Order. Is that correct? Yeah, I wouldn't disagree with that. Robert's Rules of Order is not law. Right. If you, it, it's not, it's not, doesn't make an act legal or illegal. Um, but Robert's Rules of Order sets out a model for parliamentary procedure that many boards adopt and follow or other boards um, draw from in making their own rules. Okay. So I think what you've said is correct. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Madam Attorney, was my motion to affirm our rules of procedures the way they are currently written, was that motion in order? Yes. 
Okay, I stand by my motion. Okay, I don't know if I got a second or not, but I stand by yeah, my yeah, motion. Yeah, you did get I, a second. I second it. Yeah. Okay, good. Thank okay. you. Okay, and um, we start with the substitute motion first, well, correct? Madam Chair. Yes, excuse me. We, any comments? Yes, uh, Mr. Colson. I think Jimmy's right. I mean, this is a minor procedure. If we followed to Beth's example, absolutely, Robert's Rules of Order, we will be here three times as long as what we currently are. Uh, this would expedite is, things. And, and, there, just and, and you know, sometimes finish, you ask questions, you already know the answer, but you want to bring it out. So I asked the attorney, is there any law that tells us as a board that we must use Robert's Rule of Civil Orders? No. My point then being is that everything we've done is what this board has previously wanted and quite frankly and no offense to any chairman we've ever had i don't want to make the chairman any more powerful I agree. than what they are i want the chairman there to no essentially be as weak as possible because you could get somebody with a heavy hand to sit in that chair and really beat the other eight members up so th that's Charles, I'm sorry. I, I just look at that as a little baby step in that direction, and I can't support yours. Okay. Any other comments? Okay. And on behalf Question. of the chairman previously that have served, and it is this is probably the least influential seat you can sit in up here until you get back out of because you're kind of the director. So I support exactly what you said, Tom. you're not supposed to make a comment That's it, until no. all the other eight have said something. Exactly and right. But we very loosely hold anybody to that. Yes. But, but anyway. <laughs> it is something that should be honored, and I think it is most of the time right. here. Okay. Uh, we'll, vote, we'll vote on our substitute motion first. Yes, Mr. Hammond? We have an agenda, don't we? Yes, sir. Okay. We're, we're getting on it right now. Thank so you. Um, our, do we need to have the, mo the motion is to stick with the, uh, the rules, rules of, the I mean the order of our rules and regulations. Yeah. Okay, all in favor of that motion, please raise your hand. Any opposition? Okay, so that. The substitute motion passes. Kiddo, thank you very much. Um, next, we have our items for decision. Uh, Dr. Mara. Dr. Morrow's out. Um, oh, okay. Anybody? Here, I'll okay. be happy to take that Mr. item. Mr. Elliott. On page 92, this is a budget amendment for the Health Department for Health Education Division for $139,895. And this is to um, for the Children and Youth Branch and the Women's and Children's Health Section of the Division of Public Health is providing increased funding. This is to expand the Triple P Positive Parenting Program. And this is designed to reduce out-of-home placements, hospitalizations, and emergency de department visits for child maltreatment injuries and substantiated child abuse cases. And there's no county match to this. I move approval of this. And he, he understands that when the grant money goes away, the position oh. goes away. Very, very clearly. Okay. Did you make I a motion? I move approval. I will second it. Okay. All in favor, please raise your hand. Any opposition? Okay, and next, uh, Mr. Elliott, did we not do that? Yeah, I think we actually did this one. We I was already did Announcing that. the conference, um, we handled that. All right, and the order of collection to the Pitt County tax collector for this year, Ms. Booker. Are we going to let her talk this time? <laughs> we, we let her talk before that may be in. No, <laughs> go on, Kathy. Uh, this is uh, actually different um, because each year before we start collecting we have to have an an order to collect from the commissioners Thank and that's simply all this it is. is requiring so do i have a motion, motion to approve so second. second okay all in favor please raise your hand you can go forward and start collecting i think you already have i just wrote my check yesterday yes she hope so my <laughs> half of the check okay do tim uh, yes, this item, uh, oh, by the way, good morning, Madam Chair, good morning to the board. Um, this item is for a um, amendment to the original contract for L.R. Kimball for our radio and paging project. This is not uh, any type of amendment to the existing 
uh, radio and paging contract we just signed with Motorola. So this is for the original uh, consultation project that was L.R. Kimball, which is our professional consultant. Um, when we originally signed um, the agreement with them, uh, the anticipated design of the project was to have two additional sites um, instead of the four that we ended up with uh, on our final design for the radio and paging project. So uh, with that being said, our consultant has come back. There will be additional work that will be required in implementation uh, down the road as far as the additional two towers from the original contract. So this $16,375 is for the additional work that will be required of our consultant because of the additional two towers in our design of the, of the project. Okay, is there a motion? So moved. Second. Second. All right, any questions? Yes. Yes, sir. The first two then is costing you about $8,000 for the observation for the first two tiles that was within the contract. After the second thought, we decided that'd be four tiles. So this is $8,000 per tile that they want additional money for. Is that correct? Yeah, roughly, yeah, correct. The, and how much was the total? How much was our contract, son? The first contract was 196100 Is there a second one then, other than this? No, I mean, Okay, all right, I got you. Thank That's the, you. the first primary contract dealing with this project. That's right. Okay. Um, and with the additional two sites, that should solve our communication problems. In That's right, correct. Okay. Well, I don't see what we're we having got a the motion. choice, so I'm going to vote for it. Okay, we've got a motion. All in favor, please raise your hand. Any opposition? Okay, vote. Thank you, Mr. Corp. And uh, resolution for funding for the transportation improvements. Uh, James Rhodes. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Um, as you remember, um, Commissioner Colson at our meeting uh, last month uh, requested a resolution to be brought back for you before you for consideration of some changes that have been made to our funding formula for transportation improvements and. Um, you may recall, uh, you that have been on the board longer, at one point we were under an equity formula. And just by saying that, there were equal amounts of funding that the legislature allowed per division throughout North Carolina. So our division two here would get a comparable amount based on road mileage and things of that sort. A few years ago, the legislation changed. Uh, we've now had the strategic investments formula. And that takes into account a whole another set of criteria and one just for an example is congestion needless to say the more urbanized areas would rank higher or score higher with that type of formula and therefore not surprisingly more monies now are going to the more urbanized areas and therefore Commissioner Colson uh, has a concern as do several other uh, folks in the rural areas that we need to look at a different formula so um, with that, what you have in your package this morning for consideration is a resolution that has been adopted by the Martin County uh, County Commissioners, and uh, I'll turn it over to Mr. Colson, Chair, if you'd like, for additional yes, comments. Yes, that'll be fine, Mr. Colson. Well, the, the reason for it is, I know this kind of sounds cynical, but the only thing that's strategic about the new formula is it strategically takes money away from the East and the West. And year after year, as I've been on the RPO, the Mideast RPO, is we keep seeing how little the East and the West are getting. And so as a, as a board, the Mideast uh, RPO, we decided to float a resolution and try to get all the county commissioners in the various counties in the East, and we are also going West and trying to get them to also enter into this, not in a form of a battle, but to say, hey, you know, we have needs too. When the people come from the Piedmont and go to the coast, they're, they're using our roads just as, as well. So they, they get service out of, it, out of it. But what we're trying to do is get the legislature to recognize that the formulation they got right now with available monies, short changes, m almost all the counties in the east, and almost all the counties in the West. And not surprisingly, because the majority of the legislatures live in the Piedmont, that's where the money's gone. And so people there are complaining about their congestion and so on. Now, you've heard me say this before. I've asked, a, I've asked this question 
I don't know how many times. Would you be willing to pay more money in road taxes if you knew that the money that those additional taxes went to went to new roads, improved roads, repaired bridges, new bridges, infrastructure, you know, in transportation? Everybody says yes. But everybody comes back with a caveat. Well, if we did that and the legislature had all that extra money, they won't be able to keep their hands off of it. And, you know, there's, there's a degree of truth in that. As soon as they see that money, if they have some other need, back in the Martin administration in the 1990s was the first year that they borrowed money from the, from the uh, um, highway trust fund. It was intended to be paid back. I believe, I may be mistaken, I think this is the first year that the legislature has not taken money but all the other years before. Now, with the Martin administration, it was the balance of budget. They were having bad economic, economic times, and they used that as a provision to balance their budget during that period. But we need to get recognized in the East. One, one of the big uh, problems is North and, and South. They're talking about Highway 17. Well, there's many, many miles of Highway 17. No, it doesn't go through Pitt County. But Highway 17, if it was four lanes all the way, would service the East Coast better than I-95 does, especially in, in rural uh, eastern North Carolina. So all this resolution is trying to do is to say we as a board of commissioners support the uh, objective that the Mideast RPO is trying to get some attention. And I even talked to uh, Glenn about it, and I asked him, uh, how we could possibly get his support as the president and not co not undermine one of his provisions. I'm going to paraphrase what I think I, I understand, where you really want all the counties to benefit. And as, a, as the president of the NCACD, you're trying to look at things to where all counties benefit. And so, anyway, without just droning on, that's what this is trying to do, to say Pitt County is in support of this. We're hoping all the other counties, be, not just Pitt and Martin and uh, Beaufort County, but other counties to join us, ringing that bell, so that maybe they might reconsider next year when they get together. Okay. Yes, um, Glenn and then Jimmy. Thank you, Madam Chairman. And, and I will say <clears throat> the association has supported these types of things for development for the east and the west because uh, our counties are pretty good at recognizing that as a body of counties uh, if one side is suffering we all suffer the legislature is less good at that they think the ocean starts at i-95 and tennessee starts at i-77 <laughs> and so we need to educate them on uh, the geography of their state and that um and that there's plenty going on here and, and it's the same uh, lip service we always fight that we want to grow the state we want to grow the state and we've had tremendous growth in the state but unfortunately it's only been in about 10 or 12 percent of our counties so it needs to come east and the only way to get it east is through like Tom said infrastructure it's a, a true if you build it they will come scenario if we that's why we're asking for the future uh, I something 95 designation for 264 just that sign alone will help development uh, well, they have it with 64 that kind of doesn't really even nick our border. It just comes close. Uh, and the things that they want to do with 77 to connect us to Tidewater up in Virginia to grow regionally. But it's, uh, it, it's going to take more than just keeping up with repairs in the Piedmont. There has to be significant infrastructure investments, mainly in roads in the east. I mean, you can get from Raleigh to Wilmington faster than you can get from Greenville to Moorhead. Oh, because of the uh, the road systems that they've built for that. Can't get there from here. So I, I wholeheartedly support this. Thank you. Okay. Anyone? Um, Jimmy and then Mark. James, I just wanted to ask, does the uh, TAC and what's that other committee? TCC. The TCC. For the RPO or MPO? For the MPO. MPO is not What's the TAC? Transportation Advisory Committee, right. you have one for both the t RPO and the MPO. Well, do, do those the committees RPO, support this resolution? The RPO does. That's the TAC? 
Does the MPO TAC? Yes. Is that your, uh, don't know. They've not considered this yet. Okay. Because I know when I was on that committee, we had a lot of discussion when that formula changed. Well, and just you to, on that committee too. Just to remind you, it is the Metropolitan. Um, I understand. Planning organization, more urban in nature, and there have been, and uh, I'll be quite honest, uh, Commissioner Colson and I have talked, with the new formula, uh, Greenville and Pitt has had some projects that were actually expedited. Um, so we're kind of on the border there. Want to be a team player with some of these more rural areas, so uh, kind of torn as to whether very early in this process, we have reaped some benefits, how much longer we'll be able to get some of those funds here for like the Evans Street expansion and extension, Fire Tower Road, those type things. We have benefited and in fact, the um, projects have been expedited as far as their completion schedule. So um, we're kind of in the middle of the road here. One follow-up question. Did we get those additional benefits because of the change in the formula or because we have a Pitt County person on the Board of Transportation? Both. Okay, because I know he has been a strong advocate for us. He has been. Okay. Is that it? Okay, Mr. Owens. I have two observations. One is, you know, the governor came through with this uh, proposal coming east with the bond the bond passed. I don't know Glenn and, and Tom probably more specific than about this, but there were obligations under that bond for certain funds to come if I understand it correctly. Uh, but next thing is, and as James alluded to, we fired pretty well here in Pitt County. Tom and uh, Glenn, I don't want to do something that's going to cut us off with the avenues that we've already got. Are you two of the mindset? that this will not, with a new formula, diminish what we get in Pitt County now. Okay. Mr. Colson, you had asked. Well, you, you mentioned the governor's bond committee, I uh, think. Remember that morphed. Yeah, in fact, it twice morphed. It morphed from a road bond issue into an education bond issue into, I personally think, a political slush fund. A lot of people didn't know what they were voting for. Some people, even when they went to vote, they were still thinking it was a highway bill fund and had not recognized the morphing that went on. But the answer to the question is that the, the DOT does not have enough money to do what it's slated to do. There's something like 1,500 miles of new roads every year added that they have that they adopt and yet we just had a tax reduction on the on the gasoline tax uh, which is which is hurting them but whether it'll hurt us or not you know Benjamin Franklin said something during the revolution we either all hang together and in this case the West and the East hang together or we hang separately and so if Greenville in its immediate area so as success at the I'm going to say the expense of other counties that maybe are less important because they don't have a university and and some of the things that we have well I, I consider that almost stingy on our part and self-serving we need to look at this as an area anybody on this board ever gone to the coast mm -hmm. well, wait a minute I think I met Charles Farley down there uh, not, not you know, just a couple weeks ago, and I used roads that were not in Pitt County. Now, how in the world did that happen? How could I have possibly gotten there? Okay. Just yes. to follow up, Mr. Owens, I would say we have benefited some, and um, had the bond gone through, we had already met the benchmarks that we needed, so those funds would have flowed. But even though that we have benefited, it's not been granted to us as it is in some places. We've still had to fight for every expedited project, every new project. It, it's still a fight um, out here, even for us being the, I think we're the 12th largest county in the state. Greenville's the 10th largest city in the state. And it's still uh, a brawl to get anything done and to get anything over here. 
and but once it's agreed on, then it's presented like it came down from on high, and we were blessed with this funds without any work on our part. But it tends to be a, a huge fight to get anything over I ninety five. Well, you and you and Tom saying then that this it's good. this it's resolution good. here it is going to implement our posture and our position to get more. Is that what you're telling? I think if the, the 30 some odd counties east of 95 can collectively come together on this issue along with the several counties west of 77 it will boost us as uh, mostly rural counties uh, which make up the majority 80 counties uh, rural counties in North Carolina uh, will definitely help our posture because then we're speaking more as one group saying that we need more and, and, and that's not to say that and this doesn't uh, also this is not an aggressively worded resolution, and it it, it shouldn't put out our more urban uh, partners either. Madam Chair, one more question yes, to sir. Glenn. Hasn't this approach, Glenn, in the past been used in the West to our detriment? The approach or the tone? Sir? I think approach is similar, but tone is different. Uh, but they have banded together. They're starting to get more things going with mental health. They're getting health more in the east now. That's an fact. Right. And, and it's because of time there that they approached this, like a better term, mandatory approach. And this is not a mandatory, but uh, they suffered for a while. My friends in the West told me because of demands. That, that's what prompted my question. Thank you, Madam Chair. May I ask one okay. question? Yes, Mr. Farley. Commissioner Glenn, this uh, resolution, which I'm quite certain will pass, should we present this to the TAC, the committee you mentioned, Jimmy? Will it go to that, Tom? Yeah. Well, the TAC on the, oh, you're talking about on the MPO. Yeah. We're hoping that the MPOs will support this as well. We don't know. They've not taken action, but we figure that if we start it, if nobody starts the ball rolling, it'll never go anywhere. Right. It was the Mideast RPO that's trying to get the ball rolling. Now, whether or not it happens, that's up to us. And, and this is my question, is what you said, that this type of thing, somebody is out there, or type of resolution is out there covering all of those eastern counties. I mean, are we reaching out? Yes, we are. The, okay. the RPO. Our RPO is actively going okay. to the that other was, counties. I wanted everybody to understand that because I think that's very important that certainly if we can get everybody on board with this and even some un municipalities in the east, it well, would be the, good. The proof to that, Madam Chairman, is the fact that they wrote, that the, yes. they, they wrote the initial uh, resolution. Right. And what I'm doing is piggybacking off of that, asking us to do it, and hopefully Martin and Beaufort and... Bertie and all uh, Mark, you know, all the other counties will join, will join in. in. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have a motion. Do we have second. a motion on the board yet and a second? Well, I make a motion that we approve. Okay, we and a second. second. Okay, second. we've got a motion and a second. All in favor, please raise your hand. Any opposition? Okay. It, thank uh, you. Yes, sir. Thank you. And now we have uh, a resolution from Ms. Booker. This is actually a modification to the resolution that we're requesting. Um, I have spoken with County Attorney Janice Gallagher and with the Department of Revenue um, as the compens it removes only the compensation amount out of the resolution because this compensation already goes to through the budget process, the county manager, and the board of commissioners. So moved. Okay. Is there a second, second. to the motion? So yes, we've got a second. Uh, Mr. Garris? So to remove this um, from the uh, wording in the Board of Equalization and Review, yes, to sir. remove that, how does that, how is that in the best interest of the people of Pitt County? Actually, what happens is it goes in the budget process. It gets crossed up with waiting for the approval, which you make uh, with the uh, final budget approval, and then it has to wait until the remain. I mean, the next budget year. So, is this is the way we provide compensation to the Board of Equalization and Review? Is that different? 
from the way we provide compensation for the other boards where people, private citizens, serve on? Um, it is, but it is not different than all of the other boards. All of the boards are different. Um, and I'll ask the manager to chime in if he knows differently. It is unique that the Board of Equalization and Review, which is established by a resolution of this board, has a set compensation amount within it. It sets compensation for Board of Equalization and Review members at $50 per meeting. Mm -hmm. And that cannot be changed but for by change to the resolution that establishes the Board of Equalization and Review. Other boards in the county have amounts set by the Board of Commissioners through the budget process or in other ways thereafter. What this essentially does is it, um, it takes what is a hard and fast number in a resolution that can only change by resolution and it places it into the commissioner's discretion in the budget process. Okay. Um, so then what it does is more nearly align the Board of Equalization and Review with the other boards in the county. It does and across the state it is unusual for the compensation to be set in the enabling okay. resolution. Right. So it makes it okay. more in line okay. countywide and more in line with the state. Okay. okay, thank you. Thank you. Good question. And thank you for your um, comments. Any other comments? Okay, we have a motion and a second. Right. Okay, all in, excuse me. Yes. all in favor, please raise your hand. Any opposition? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, we are ready to go into closed session, Madam Attorney, if you'll take us there. Madam yes. Chairwoman, I yes. need to be excused. Okay, Mr. Farley is requesting to be excused. And it has been suggested that this board go into closed session pursuant to North Carolina General Statute 143.318.11A5 to establish or instruct the public body staff or negotiating agents concerning the position to be taken by or on behalf of the public body with regard to the price or material terms of a contract and the act or the acquisition of real property by purchase option exchange or lease also under subsection a3 to consult with an attorney employed by the public body to preserve the attorney client privilege and thirdly under subsection a1 to preserve confidential information okay i'll entertain a motion I'll to go into go closed session all right all in favor please raise your hand any opposition okay that's unanimous Uh, welcome back to the citizens and the viewers. Um, after our closed session, uh, we have a motion. Uh, Make a motion that we approve our June 6 closed session minutes as to the content only. Second. Okay. All in favor, please raise your hand. Any opposition? Okay, it passes. We will follow up with our comments from our commissioners. Commissioner Hammond, do you have a comment? No, ma'am. Okay. Colson? No Ms. Williams? Yes, I do. i like to thank the citizens for their efforts to make the area look better by keeping their lawns and, and improving with the trash pickup on both sides of the highway. I also want to encourage you to apply with the county manager's office's office for boards and commission. Uh, we do need your support with assisting the board with your um, services. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Ms. Owens? Madam Chair, uh, I move that uh, this board uh, create and issue a proclamation or resolution thanking and praising all of our police, our sheriffs, our first responders, and all people of public safety for the contributions and life that they have given to the society of this county and this country. Uh, it's an old expression that I've heard all my life uh, when someone wants to be supportive of you is that I've got your back. Let's show these people that we've got their back. Let's forget whether someone's got a mental illness or forget where someone has got to be ridden by, rode by, but let the police, the deputy sheriffs, the first responders, be our first call and our first action, and I so move in that. Second that. Okay. All in favor, please raise your hand. And maybe we can get that resolution together and yes. uh, present it maybe at the next yes, meeting. Thank you very much. I have no comment. Uh, Mr. Chair, Madam Chair, I want to commend uh, 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 our 
first responder, our law enforcement, and especially our citizens uh, in this community for, for having a shared responsibility in terms of working together. I think that we are very fortunate in Pitt County and very fortunate in the city of Greenville that we have uh, uh, a collaborative uh, experience with our law enforcement and the citizens uh, of, of the community. And I think in order to continue to, 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 to make this a positive, positive adventure, we have to continue that, that open line of communication. I think communication is very essential in terms of, of fighting against a lot of ill feelings uh, among the citizens and among our law enforcement. And I think we're very fortunate to have that uh, with our uh, sheriff department and with our police department here in the city of Greenville. Okay, thank you. Mr. Garris? No comment. No, I Mr. think Webb? Mr. Owens for his motion and, and Mr. McLaughlin for his comments as well. I mean, he spent well over 20 years in, in law enforcement himself. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to say I'm very proud of our community because we're not perfect and, and we do have issues. I mean, there's no doubt but we don't have the issues that a lot of places have. And I know I'm, I'm serving in a call capacity right now, and then uh, I was called out for something last night, but when the phone first rang, uh, all I could think about was it was a phone call about something similar happened here that happened in Dallas, and then again in Baton Rouge, and um, Georgia, and Texas, and um, Wisconsin, uh, to just to name a few of them that have happened lately is law enforcement deaths by gunfire are up 75% this year. But uh, we have a very good community that has an open dialogue with its law enforcement agencies. We have good law enforcement leaders and sheriff and our chiefs that uh, keep an open dialogue. And, and for some, that, that may be skew us to the national uh, scene a little bit because we, we have been fortunate. And again, not saying that there, there's not been issues, because there are. Any organizations that humans participate in are going to have um, some uh, things that aren't perfect. But, uh, but I, I love our community, I'm proud of our community, and, and I appreciate this board's uh, stance on that. So thank you, Madam Chairman. Yes, thank you. And it's very important that this resolution include all of our small villages and communities and towns because, it, as you said, it is certainly a county that we can be proud of. Um, I will entertain a motion, motion for adjournment. Thank, Thank you very goodness. much. And a second. All in favor, please raise your right hand. And we're now dismissed. <laughs>